Thank you. I'm Liz. I'm an alcoholic. This is not my first time here. The last time I was here, it was like years ago. Um, my sobriety date is July 6th, 2019. I have a sponsor. She knows she's my sponsor. I've been through the steps multiple times. Yeah, so I, I take other people through the steps. I have a home group. I have a commitment. Yeah. So I'm just going to tell my story. I'll start from the beginning. So my childhood was pretty traumatic. Um, I grew up with an alcoholic dad and a very mentally ill mom. Um, it was not, not a fun childhood. Didn't really get to be a kid. Um, you know, my parents were like arguing all the time. Um, my mom would call the cops on my dad for like no reason. So we always had like the cops at our house. Um, and through all this, I basically coped by, I don't know if anyone's heard of like the, um, the roles that children of alcoholic families take on. I became like the lost child where I just kind of wanted to like fade in the background, didn't really want anyone to know what was going on with me, didn't want to be like noticed pretty much. So that ended up being just like the way I was. Like I was like that with everything. I didn't want to be noticed, I would just try to fade in the background, didn't want to tell anyone what was really going on with me ever. Like I just didn't even know how um, cause I never really learned that. Like I didn't learn how to like confide in people and tell them how I was really doing. I just learned like survival mode, like keep everything to yourself. Don't tell anyone. Um, so because of that, I was very, I guess you could say lonely. I had a lot of like self-esteem issues growing up. Um, I didn't like myself. I thought I was ugly. I just, yeah, didn't like myself. Felt like I was different from other people. But all of this, I would hide at school. I I put on like a, I guess a different person. I was like outgoing. I had a lot of friends. I was good in school. Um, and no one knew, none of my friends knew like how my house really was. Um, I was ashamed of it. I remember one time I had like my best friend over in like fourth grade and my mom used to work um, weekends and then me and my sister would be home with my dad the whole weekend and he would just like drink. And I remember, you know, I had this like play date and I was like, I really, I was really hoping like he wouldn't drink, but he did. And then like the mom found out and like she wasn't allowed at my house anymore, um, which really sucked. So I just felt like different. And then also like my it was a weird dynamic because my mom when I was born I'm I'm younger was like this is my daughter and and my sister is my dad's daughter so there was like this divide and like she didn't want me to be close with my dad and I share that because um I don't know maybe someone can relate um Anyway, so when I was in sixth grade, my parents ended up um, splitting up. It was very devastating for me. They always told me they would never, um, they would never do that. So that really sucked. And so I went with my mom. They didn't officially get divorced until I was after 18. Um, so I just stayed with my mom the whole time. And I um, didn't, I talked to my dad like a couple times a year. I thought like, like he didn't really make an effort I thought, um, so that was really upsetting to me. Um, later, once I was an adult, I, he told me like, she didn't want him to talk to me. Like she prevented that. Um, so I guess that's what happened, um, which sucked. And um, then in eighth grade, I developed an eating disorder. You know, that goes along with like my self-esteem issues, which I struggled with till I guess I was like 20 after I got sober um but won't get there yet um and the first time I got drunk was in eighth grade um I was on vacation with my sister and my mom um and for some reason we all decided to play a drinking game where every time like one of us would pass and go that person would have to drink like vodka until we told them to stop 
So that was the first time I got drunk. And then, you know, my mom went to bed and then I wanted to keep drinking and I got very out of hand and I did some very out of character things. And it was really embarrassing. Um, even though I was only with my sister, it was still really embarrassing. Um, and I remember like the next day I was really hungover and she was like, we should do that again tonight. And I was like, no, like that, no. Like I just had this feeling alcohol is probably not good for me. Um, and, but then fast forward to freshman year, all my friends wanted to drink. I didn't want to be the one not drinking. So of course I drank with them. Um, and then the second time we all drank together was the beginning of freshman year. Um, I had like six shots. It was like a huge sleepover with like 12 girls. And then like these guys came over and brought us, um, like handles. And I remember I had six shots and then I went into the kitchen, made sure no one was there, took a whole handle with me and like had six shots in a row, didn't chase them. Um, so, I mean, I had no tolerance to alcohol whatsoever. I hadn't had enough experience with alcohol to know that that is like really dangerous. I had no clue. All I knew was that I loved the feeling and I wanted to feel that way more. Like I wanted to get out of myself. I, I was just holding so much in all the time, like of, of trauma that I hadn't dealt with. And, um, like kind of just having like an alternate persona, like with my friends that it just was really overwhelming. And I really think that's like what, um, caused me to drink the way I did. Um, I just, I just like the feeling of no inhibitions, feeling like I could actually be myself instead of like being the one that like fades in the background and like shy. Um, so anyway, I, um, basically, I don't, obviously I don't remember that night at all. Um, apparently I was, I threw up all over myself. They had to like change my clothes. They put me in the bathtub at one point cause they didn't know what to do with me. Um, I was having seizures. They said I was turning blue. Um, and I've like looked up what my blood alcohol level would have been. And it would have been between like a 0.4 and 0.65, which is literally insane. Like I probably almost died. Um, especially since they said I was like turning blue and they were afraid. So they told their parents and then my parents came and picked me up and my dad had to carry me out because I couldn't walk. Um, and I woke up in my bed, not knowing how I got there, not wearing my own clothes, had bruises like all over myself. Didn't know what happened. Had all these texts on my phone. Like, are you okay? And I was like, what are you talking about? And of course, none of us had any experience with drinking. So they were like, what do you mean? Like, you don't know, like no one knew that was a thing to black out. I was like, no, I have no clue. And, um, I didn't thank the girl that took care of me that whole night. I didn't think to thank her. Um, she got upset over that. I just thought it was no big deal. Like, I was like, I don't see the big deal. You know, like I didn't really get in trouble. Didn't get grounded or anything. Surprisingly, um, actually didn't even go to the hospital, but I was like sick for like two days. I couldn't do anything. Um, so you would think that that would be like a red flag. Um, I know, um, the mom of the girl's house I was at, she like told my mom, like your daughter might be an alcoholic. And my mom got so pissed at that. Cause she was probably like, I don't want another one of her dad. Um, so basically it was like, no, she's not. And that made me really angry too, but nothing came of that. And then, um, you know, next week came along, did the same thing. I didn't, um, like I didn't get, ever do that again necessarily but I you know would black out throw up um my friends would catch me like there'd be a, ba a party in the basement and I would go upstairs into one of their bedrooms and just like drink so no one knew how much I was drinking and they would catch me and they'd be like what are you doing um and this just went on like every single weekend every weekend I would black out throw up um and then there would be points where I was like okay, I probably should try to like control this a little bit because I don't want, um, I don't really want them to be like suspicious. And so there would be times where I'd be successful where like I wouldn't black out and I wouldn't throw up, which was like rare. And, um, but then that would be followed by like the next time, like getting obliterated, not having any control of what I was drinking whatsoever. Um, and so that went on for like two years like every single weekend, didn't miss a weekend. Um, then during the summer, it was more than that. Um, 
and it was always like hard liquor. And then come junior year, I think my friends were sick of me. They stopped talking to me. They stopped inviting me to things. Um, and these were like my childhood best friends had been best friends with them since like fourth grade. We hung out like every single weekend, like basically since then would hang out the whole entire summer, like would have like one day, like once a month where we weren't like having a sleepover. Um, so that was like very traumatic to me. And I didn't know what I did wrong. Like they just started hanging out like without me and like not inviting me. Um, and I didn't know what I did. I had no clue that like drinking may have been like the reason. And I mean, I wasn't a good friend. I put drinking above everything. I didn't really care about them. I just wanted to drink. Um, yeah, so that went on and then, and then, so I became, that was like the first time I had an issue with like depression, like real depression and anxiety. Um, it was after that. And then of course I tried to make more friends to drink with. I didn't want to like make friends for, I just wanted people to drink with cause I didn't want to drink alone. Cause I thought that would be deemed like weird. Um, so yeah, I made those friends. They got sick of me too. Then by the end, they didn't like me either. Um, and so then by the end of senior year, like, oh, and all this whole time I was like a runner. So I was living like a double life. I did cross country, indoor track and outdoor track all the years. Um, until senior year, I got injured in cross country season. So I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Um, but I was like cross country captain, like two years in a row. Um, and so I really was living like this double life. Like if anyone knows, um, meets are usually, um, Saturday mornings. I remember one freshman year, um, one of those meets I drank the night before and I literally showed up like still drunk like to the meet and that was the only one my whole entire high school career that ever got um canceled it was because it was like too muddy which is like a god moment and then you know senior year comes and I got injured um and that was like the end of the world for me pretty much because running was also like my whole life um I was gonna get a scholarship to run in college and then they took it away because I got injured I tore my hip labrum I was out the whole year um so you know that paired with like the friend situation and um I was just really depressed and of course like my grades started going down I started not going to school a lot of the time um it was just really it got really dark really quick um I ended up getting surgery at the end of my senior year for that injury. Um, and I was signed up to go to college to run. And I backed out like literally last second, like the, Ju like Ju the June before that next year. Um, I still don't know why. I think it was just my drinking got in the way of everything. Um, so that was very depressing. Um, so basically by this point I was, um, suicidal. It was, uh, I was, I started going to like treatment cause I didn't know what to do, but I wasn't telling them like my real issues. I wasn't telling them that I, like, I wasn't telling them the way I drank. I wasn't telling them, um, my, about my eating disorder. I wasn't telling them anything. Um, so of course it didn't help. And then I started seeing this therapist, um, and I told him about my drinking and he was like, have you thought about going to AA? And I was like, no, like, I'm not doing that. And he was like, okay, well, what about like ACA then adult children of alcoholics? I was like, okay, fine. I'll do that. So I started going to those. Um, and I would like say like, I'm going to stop drinking. Um, like I would say this to my therapist and he'd be like, okay, and I'll go a while without drinking. And then I would drink again. And he'd be like, I thought you said you're quitting. And, um, I was like, well, I don't care. Um, actually funny when I came in AA, I found out this therapist was sober and in AA and I didn't know it this whole time. Um, so I think that's another, a God moment too. Like he had like 10 years sober. Um, I think when I started seeing him, he had like eight years sober. Um, I found out from someone in the rooms actually. Um, and, 
anyway, so I was going to these adult children of alcoholic meetings. Um, and then um, I was, my mom died actually. Um, my mom committed suicide and I found her. Um, so it was very um, traumatic for me. This was New Year's 2019. Um, and so you can imagine how I felt I was already going through all this crap. Um, and then like four months later, I broke my hip. My dog like pulled me down a hill and I like dislocated and broke my hip. Um, and then after that, I was like, F everything. Like, what the hell is wrong with my life? Like, what is this? Um, so I, um, I was in the hospital for like four days and, you know, I got out, I was supposed to like non-weight bearing, non-weight bearing on my hip, but I would drink, um, and I would like go up and down stairs on crutches drunk. And like, it was just a very dangerous situation. Um, fast forward to July of that year. Um, I was still going to ACA like here and there. And I randomly, like one Friday night, I had these plans with someone and they fell through. And I texted my ACA friend. I was like, what are you doing tonight? She was like, I'm going to an AA meeting. And I was like, oh, wow. Um, can I come? I don't know why I said that. Like, I was literally just lonely. Um, so she was like, yeah, like it's an open meeting. So you don't have to like have a problem with drinking to come. I was like, okay. But I, I do kind of have like a problem with drinking. And that was the first time I ever admitted it. And so I went to this meeting. And I would say that was probably like my first spiritual experience because I related so much to these people. Um, like I was like, I can't believe I'm not the only one who feels this way. I thought it was like an alien, basically. Sorry, I need to speed up. <laughs> um, that's how I felt. And um, it turns out that I wasn't the only one that felt that way. And um, like I said, I didn't, I didn't like telling anyone where I was at or like how, asking for help. So I wasn't gonna, um, talk to anyone after the meeting and I was like, never going to come back, but I was like on my way out. And these three girls came cause at the beginning of the meeting, they were like, this is anyone's first AA meeting. And I raised my hand. I was like, I'm Liz. I don't know if I'm an alcoholic. Cause I heard everyone saying that after they raised their hand. Um, so I was on my way out and these three girls like bombarded me and they were like, oh my gosh, like when's the last time you drank? And I had actually drank right before that and then drove to the meeting. And um, they were like, oh my gosh, like you need to do a 90 and 90. I thought they were kidding. Um, yeah, here's my number, like come with me to this meeting tomorrow, call me anytime. And for me, this was so weird because I didn't, like I wasn't used to that. I was just used to people not wanting anything to do with me. Um, and so from that was enough for me to like keep coming back. So I met this girl at this meeting the next day. They invited me out to dinner after that. And then I got like assigned my temporary sponsor at that dinner. Um, so then I started working the steps and basically it was like the love from the people in this program that like got me in the door and like got me to stay because there's just like something in this program that is, I think it's like God, it like brings us all together um because we've all ex experienced the same things and it's it's hard to like be honest about those things anywhere else um so I started working the steps um I wasn't perfect I got resentments to some sponsors I went through some sponsors um and it took me like two years to do the steps because of this um but eventually I did it and then I started taking other people through the steps um but yeah, I just got involved right away. I did I actually did like 75 and 75. I didn't do the full 90, 90, just telling myself. Um, I started meditating every day. I started praying every morning. God, please keep me sober. Um, and I would thank God at night for keeping me sober. Um, I would do like the third step prayer, um, the seven step prayer every day. Um, and it just kept building from there. And then because of this and like the support I got from the rooms, I was able to go to treatment for my eating disorder. And so I um, went to treatment for that for like a year and a half, like when I got sober um, outpatient. Um, so it was like I was doing both at the same time, which was a little difficult. But um, yeah. And then eventually, I don't know how much time I have left, but I got in a relationship. Everyone says, don't put your relationship in front of um, AA. 
And I was like, I would never do that. Of course I did that. Um, unfortunately, you know, moved in with him, stopped going to meetings. Um, I don't recommend at all. It was awful. Um, ultimately that relationship didn't work out. Um, I moved back to, um, where I got sober, like in September and I've been like throwing myself back in again. Um, and it's really been helping a lot. Um, it's hard to like express how much, how much like my life has changed since I've gotten sober. Like basically I didn't have, I felt like I didn't have a chance in life. Like I felt like I was going to die somehow, some way. Like I didn't know how, um, like there was a point where I literally Googled like, can you die of loneliness? That's how lonely I was. Um, and this program has completely changed all of that. Like, um, you know, and people say like, you have a life beyond your wildest dreams, but it's actually true. Um, yeah. I don't really know what else um, to say. I'm really not good at ending these usually, but um, I think that's all I have.